This is a uh, postcard number 128 of Double Cross Anime. Uh, this week, we're going to do uh, the US uh, uh, series. So we look at like the two episodes of the, uh, of his previous, his classics, basically. So the four, the four show that we are going to do, because we don't want to do any like recent uh, series that we already cover here in the, post, in the, uh, the uh, Double Cross Anime. So we do uh, Kemono Zume in 2006, Kaiba to 2008, The Tatami Galaxy in 2010, and Ping Pong the Animation in 2014. And we cover the rest of, uh, of Spirit Circle as well. Yeah, two whole volumes, 16 chapters, and a <laughs> yes. lot of a lot of dialogue, man, about parallel universes and time rivers and you, oh you sound exhaust, exhausting i i'm exhausted just thinking about it i didn't didn't really have a good time reading any of that in fact i didn't have a time reading any of it because i didn't read it i skipped all over right. all, the, all that stuff hmm. all right all right Interest, interesting i mean i bet i can tell i i bet i followed it just as well as everyone else who wasted their time reading it all the good you know the good guys win in the end they they all pull together and they win bad guys defeated it's a shonen manga what what else is there to say yep all right before we get into spirits of code out um let's just tackle uh uss stuff first okay so starting we start in 2006 with, uh, yep Yep, yep. So, so f- out of all the four shows, I I would say that I have I have never seen uh, Kimono no Zume before. I I watched Kaiba and Ping Pong the, an- the animation like like when I first start uh, watching it. So it's been a long time I haven't watched a- uh, the Kaiba and Ping Pong the animation. And Tatami Galaxy is like my my yearly uh, ritual for me now. I would watch it every single year. I I mean I've seen I've seen Kimono Zume I've seen all these. Um, mm-hmm. You also one of my favorite anime directors. Yep. Though uh, you know Japan Sinks being his most recent product is uh, and then his retirement for, as the president of Science Saru mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't bode particularly well for the future. Yep. Yep. But I think I said in a previous I think I said in a previous episode of the podcast that like he's already a legend, mm-hmm. you know, so yep. he can quit now. And I'm I'm good. Nah, no, I'm good with that. no, 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 no. <laughs> I I still want to see more stuff from him, and especially this year when uh, apparently one of his stuff will be coming out soon. Inuo. Inuo. Yeah. Who knows Inuo. whether it'll come out this year or next year? There's right, delays right. all the time. Yeah. Uh, hope you know it's hopefully it comes out eventually, and uh, hopefully it's good. But if not, yep. e- even if he, you know, produces two stinkers in a row, I don't really, I don't hold it against him. I mean, he directed ping pong, so. And other he, stuff, which yeah, we are about to talk about. So first is Kemun, uh, Zume. So uh, fresh off um, from his mind game. Yeah. Mind game is a really, really fun film. Yeah, I... I I really enjoyed my game. Yeah, and Kimono Zume kind of feels like mind game, actually, in how uh, how loose and scribbly it is, and its incorporation mm-hmm. of um, photography, real world photography, into some of the backgrounds. Did you notice, yeah. like in in Kimono Zume, there are some there are some environmental shots where like only a certain section of the screen will be live action, like the water on the beach mm-hmm. um, will be photographed. And everything else will mm-hmm. be drawn by hand. It creates a really, really weird um, aesthetic yep, yep. <laughs> that I kind of like. Yeah, that, that's right. It it is it looks so different, but um, not compared to my game because my game I uh, I remember he uh, incorporate like many uh, visual style as well, like uh, in regard to uh, character designs and uh, and even the animation style. Here. 
it 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 look it look like it look very uh, singular. It look it look unique and uh, but 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 he just you know like having just one uh one kind of style for the uh, character designs. Um. Yeah, I, I guess so. Although they're they're drawn so loosely that um, the, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of like discipline to it. So even even though they are all drawn in the same yeah. general style, like the it's just mm -hmm. that the model sheets are really loose that the animators yeah. are following. Yeah. Um, and I you know I I like it. It's yeah. it's cool. I especially like the the fact that all the characters look so distinct from one another. Um, That's right. You know, like a lot a lot of times. When you when you watch anime, all the female characters, for example, will look quite similar to each other. They just have di like different color hair, but the two mm. women uh, who are introduced in Kimonozume early on, Yuka and uh, Rei, or how do you say her? how do you say her name, Rie? Rie. Yeah. yeah. Um, they look they look totally different, uh, totally different mm. from one another. They have like they have different body types. They have different facial structures. Um, yeah. All the characters look really different. Like the um, in episode two, the the guy who's uh, checking in at the at the funeral, the guy who's at the check in desk. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. He his design. He's like so rotund, and his lips are so massive. Uh, it's it's as though his character was designed strictly for the scene where he sees Yuka, and then like his eyes slowly widen until they're the size of like dinner plates. Um, yeah. and then his, the menacing grin that he has on his face during the subsequent scenes where they're trying to entrap her because they know that she's a shokujinki. Um, yeah. just the, yeah. the characters have very, you know, their appearances like kind of leap out at you. You can't, uh, you can't just kind of look at them one time and be like, ah, yes, I've seen this character type 317 times. That, that's right. That's right. And um, I, I I love that the first two episodes um like basically like cover uh cover all the introductions so we have to see like all the main characters we have to see what what the conflict is and um you know that like, it 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 really a good tease uh for the rest of the uh, of the series. Yeah, I mean not not only is it a good tease for it, but it it covers so much. They cover so much material in their own right. These first two episodes. Mm -hmm we're like we're 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 blazing through the story here i mean he's already at the end of by the end of episode two he has fled on a train well he's jumped off of a bridge or something or off of a, off of a balcony and onto yeah. a moving train and he's being taken away with with yuka uh, away yep. from the dojo where he's probably lived his entire life that's right uh yeah so, <laughs> so like where are we gonna go from here there's 11 more episodes yeah, well, well, my take on that on, on that scene is that oh my god, it's so convenient that have uh that they have like a moving train going at that at that time. Yeah, that's definitely de definitely <laughs> true. Actually, I mean, wouldn't you just die either way? <laughs> even yeah. if the, even if there were a train, I mean, a moving train is just gonna you're gonna die when you hit that instead of the railroad tracks. Well, they one of them is uh a uh. Uh, a man, uh, a flesh eater. The other right. one is, you know, like the uh, a, a really talented uh, of a fighter. So no, right. they're not gonna die jumping up, <laughs> jumping on the train. Yeah, but I mean, but if you think about it, the fact that the train is moving means that it's more hazardous to land on the train, right? That's right. <laughs> but it, it it's just a small detail, you know. Don't sweat it. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of other stuff to sweat. Um, yep. <laughs> rather than, rather than that, there's like monster, huge monsters getting their limbs cut off, and people pooping themselves in in the middle of battle. Yep. Um, yeah. That's a re that's a really weird, very Yuasa detail to ca have that tiny little bit of a, like scatological humor um, that also ties into Toshihiko's character um, mm -hmm. because he has some psychological hang up preventing him yep. from killing killing these monsters yeah and we know that it like has something he, to do with his with his new mother who he sees in a memory and then like a, a blood splatter um mm. you know kind of splashes across his his memory of of this woman who may somehow be tied to yuka we don't know mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because uh, he keep reminded he reminded uh, Yuka keep reminded him of his mother. I think. Yes. Yeah. There's definitely a Freudian um, aspect to this entire thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, even if you look, even if you like, put aside um, what what Toshihiko has going on mentally, psychologically, uh, mm-hmm. with with his with his mother and and with Yuka and with his uh, him still being like hung up in the anal stage of his development. Um, mm-hmm. If you were to anal. speak about it in Freudian terms. Even if you put yeah. all that aside, just the very concept of the shokujinki of the flesh eaters, um, yeah. is directly tied to sex, because that's they use like a hologram of two women with huge tits um, to like distract the the flesh yeah. eaters yeah. and get them to like run towards it so they can cut off their arms and even the very first scene of the first episode where the two flesh eaters in their human forms are talking to each other. Um, in, in that like aquarium slash yep. restaurant. Yep. 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 And they're talking about like, I only eat, I only eat girls. I won't eat anything else. I just, you know, I, I don't eat men only, only cute girls. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. So there's, there's a link between cannibalism and sex That's in right. this, in this series, which is, which is interesting to, to think about. And yeah. And um, I, I think it's interesting, uh, like how the, how they design the monster. Uh, in a way that you know, like uh, they at first is like the the f- uh food of food of monster, but uh like the the new spe- species is they kind of look like human, and when they got killed, they reverse back to human again. So right. I think that that is like kind of very interesting aspect because I think uh from what from what the two episodes imply, I have I have I have I have I haven't seen like the rest of it. I I think that it's it's like uh it's it's some it had something to do with the human so they uh they kind of like re, uh a new species come like like they they are the, the hybrid between the human and and the monsters right yeah it's definitely um the the way that these two episodes go about um like the way that they approach that phenomenon they make it seem as mm-hmm. though it's a new it's a new thing so yep, when yep. when they kill them, them reverting to their human form, that's something that um, members of the I, I wrote I wrote down the name of this this sword style or this clan. Where is it? it starts with an F. No, it's Kifuken. Uh, Kifuken. Like yep. the this is something that the Kifuken have not seen before. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And I, to be honest, I mean, even though I've seen this, I've seen this series once before. It's been many years, so I don't I don't remember how yep. that uh, how that thread develops. All right, I I think my take a bit for now is that uh for the human who is experience like extreme sex or pleasure or something, they might become one. Oh, so you think it's like a dormant trait in all humans? Yep, yep. Anyone yep, has yep, the yep. potential to become a shokujinki. Yep, yep. That's what. That's what. That's that's what my take for now. So I I I I would think like specifically to uh uh to Shihiko. That in the future, when he get uh, appointed to Yuka and on the uh, flesh Easter, and um, you know that he will develop and um and might tr- uh transform into one. Hmm. Interesting. My take only. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting to think about. Um, I yeah, mean, but... it, it, that would kind of that would kind of uh, violate the the retelling of Romeo and Juliet that's sort of going on here. <laughs> Uh, where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. two star-crossed lovers, yeah. um, who I like they they can't mean. be reconciled to one another because they're they're from different clans. They fr- yeah, they come from the two different worlds. Right. If he can turn into a shokujinki, then that won't be separating them anymore. But yep. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, that's a good thing. Could well. I mean could could happen? Yep. We, because we don't know. That's right, and I. I, I felt it's very interesting that um you know like uh we we have in four souls here, uh Kemunozume, Kaiba, uh Tata uh, Tatabi Galaxy and people in the animation and we can see like the distinction between uh his early early stuff, two thousands, and his his late later stuff, in the sense that um uh, uh Kemono 
Zume and Kaiba as all original. Had kind of like the same style. And what? Um, ta- no, no, no. I, I, I mean like it, it, it loose. It, it more loose than let's say Tatami Galaxy and people the, the animation no. where he adapt from, uh, from other source material and it's let loose. <laughs> now, there is. Th- I mean, yeah, Kemonozume and, and Kaiba are both original stories, but there are almost no similarities between the two. I I I, I just mean in the sense that they are really loose in um, in in storytelling and then in the in the animation as well. No, I don't think Kaiba's. I don't think Kaiba's loosely animated at all. Mm. The right, characters I, look. I the mean... characters are hi- highly stylized. They look like Doctor yes. Seuss characters, but. You know, they're not their faces aren't scribbles. <laughs> Sometimes the characters mm. in Kimonozume are just scribbles. Yeah, well, in fact, well, I think that... Kimonozume has more in common with Ping Pong the animation visually mm. out of these yeah, four, right. these mm. four uh, episodes or series. And, and I think I think the loose design of uh, Kimonozume work. You know, like uh, at the end of um, episode one, where where the two have sex, and uh, um. And where you can just uh you know like at 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 one point transform into the monster. It's, it's yeah. And then back to back to human again. It just looks so great. It just yeah, oh. it does. It's a it's a really it's a really cool scene. I also really like yeah. the scene where they're. Um, sex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were just talking about that. That's at the end of episode one, and I mean they their relationship is like purely carnal at this point. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, it kind of makes sense because she's she's a flesh eater, and the show is working to tie, um, you know, the the flesh eaters to earthly pursuits. I guess mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. hunger, I imagine, as well is so like cravings, lust, and lust in general, not just not just sexual lust, but mm-hmm. that's that's the yeah. point I think of, of flesh eaters. Is they they represent yeah. that side of human nature, at least metaphorically. Um, mm-hmm. But like, what what I was driving at was in uh, in episode two when they're at the motel. Um, mm-hmm. She writes, "I am a flesh eater" in lipstick on his back. Yep. Um, it was really that was a really interesting choice, I guess. Like it, it the the concept of the scene is really cool that she's confessing this um, this huge part of who she is to him, but um, mm-hmm. he can't you know. Only, only with a sense that he can't pick up on, like he can't see his back. He could only he could only feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of kind of an interesting thing that you yeah. also did there, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it makes you it makes you feel for Yuka because she she She's likes this guy. It. Yeah, she likes this guy enough to at least make that gesture, but she yeah. can't she can't tell him. Of course, he yeah he finds out at the end of episode two anyway. Yeah, but but, uh, but the thing is, he still she doesn't know that uh, this guy come from the clan who, who's basically killed the flesh either either. Right. So they both find so, out yeah. something terrible about the other person at the end. Right. Right. But now they're but, on the back of a train, heading yeah. out of town. On on the top of the train. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I have to assume that eventually they made their way down some ladder or something. Yeah, yeah. And they like got on got on the train. But I mean, one is a monster and one is a martial artist, so they probably don't even need to. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man. Um how how do you find a conflict between the two products? Um it's 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 interesting. Uh it's yeah. it's good enough. I, I mean, I think the best relationship in the show is definitely Toshiko and Yuka. Um, yeah. But the brother, there's there's another conflict in this series, like in, in terms of um, discipline, humanity's discipline represented by the Kifuken versus um, their like more primal desires represented by the Shokujinki. There's that mm-hmm. um, di- like, like um, thematic dichotomy. There's mm-hmm. also um, like tradition versus technology that's what the yeah. the conflict yeah. between the two brothers represents um 
So I, yeah. I think that's, I think that's interesting. Um, it's another way to explore the, the different paths um, and different ways of expressing themselves that, that humans have and that humans can take. Yeah. Well, um, I can see your point. I, but for me, I don't really care about the, the two, uh, you know, the, uh, the two products relationship. I think I zoom out just too loud at the moment. Uh, he's too, I he's found too that loud. He, he, he's loud. He, he just, you know, like screaming all the time. And and just making scenes basically all the time. Yeah, I mean he's um, consumed by jealousy and uh, mm-hmm. and inferiority. Yep, yep, yep. What I found interesting is is uh, Rhea and um, you know like her her connection with all this because she she not a part of the clan, and uh, people keep telling her that you know that you don't need to to join, you don't need to you know that to. Um, to involve yourself in in this, but she she does it anyway. Yeah, she and, is. Um, she feels like she's kind of from a different universe from everyone else, because she's mm-hmm. she's literally a childhood friend character who made a, a a a promise when she was a primary schooler to get married to the main character. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's a she's a walking trope. Um, but yeah. you still you still really <laughs> feel for her because. Um, she obviously likes Toshihiko, but he is, he meets this woman and at the very start of the story and is immediately like infatuated with her. So she has no shot. Hmm. And what, what the heck is, uh, is that monkey doing? The, yeah, I was, the monkey is really, really interesting to me. Um, (laughs) I mean, Science Saru's at th- at this point. This is two thousand six when Kimonozume was made. Science Saru wouldn't be established yep. for another like seven years or something. But mm-hmm. uh, it's the monkey. I think is just Yuasa likes monkeys. He put a monkey in the show um, and involved it in the plot. Like it um, it plays a crucial role in the fight between Toshihiko and Kazuma in yep. the first episode. And it's also like the monkeys travels through the dojo and like the upstairs room or wherever it is that they're having that banquet mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. after after the funeral. That's the monkey is how we find out about the trap that's being set for Yuka. Like when he crawls underneath the table and we see all the weapons laid there. Yeah, um, yeah. I I think Iwasa just likes monkeys and he. <laughs> He wanted the the monkey to kind of be like the the an information pipeline to the audience, right? Um, right. I really do think it's just like some weird, uh, it, meta aspect yeah. of the show. I don't know how to put it really. I just I I think it's really <laughs> interesting though. I think it's like clever and and hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because like at, at some point the character do aware of the monkeys. Like I remember Toshihiko follow the monkeys, and yeah. and then uh he he uh he meet Yuka, but uh, other than that though he uh the monkey Saru it just serve as yeah, yeah, uh like you say the uh <laughs> information pipeline you say yeah they yeah yeah he just there to you know like to. Uh, to guide out all this uh, information visually. I think that that's great. I think that's smart. Yeah. It's really... I can imagine a lot of people watching this show and be like, what the hell is that? What is that <laughs> monkey? I don't like that monkey. That monkey's weird. But uh, I like how weird it is. It's cool. <laughs> right. And um, the last thing I want to say uh, of this show before we move on to Kaiba is is that I, I I think I think you as I revisit that team again like later on with our Devil Man Cry Baby, on on the thing about you know like um monsters uh flesh eating and, and sex, yeah, and like what it means to be a man versus what it means to be like you know a beast, a monster, yeah, a demon. What separates um, us from from animals, essentially, like it's it's just a very glammed up, sexed up version of that question. How are we different from other creatures of the earth? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, based on the first two episodes of Kimono uh, Zume and the first two episodes of um, Devil Man Cry Baby, if I remember, I still remember them. I prefer uh, this one more. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Kimono Zume is great. All right. 
All right, I'm looking forward to to uh, to see the rest of, of the show now. All right, I'm probably gonna rewatch right. it. Yep, let's move on to Kaiba. Right. Well, Kaiba is another another Yuasa anime with a mascot character. The mascot in yep. Kimono Zume mm-hmm. being the monkey, and the mascot in Kaiba being Hyo Hyo, the little <laughs> guy who we meet in episode two, or I should say, girl. Yeah not guy because it's it's hinted in the in the dialogue in the cargo bay in episode two that hyo hyo is a woman really all right yeah i knew uh pick up on that um so it's an you know it's another uas very uasa looking um yep. sort of Mascot. cartoon cartoon character yeah with like long legs and or long limbs i should say and and just a little easy to draw face with a couple dots for eyes. Yeah. Um, very expressive. Ugly as heck, but expressive. All right. Wait a minute. U- ugly? Are we talking about the same <laughs> person? I'm talking about Kyokyo, the guy with the little propeller. Um, I know. You think Kyokyo is ugly? Kyokyo is cute. <laughs> it's just All like right. a little, little helicopter buddy <laughs> that flies around. And makes okay, look at, weird look at screaming noises. All right, all right, let's <laughs> let's move on. I t- uh, out of all the four shows, and I don't t- take this very very lightly. I think Kaiba is still the most uh, uh ambitious out of like all the four shows to be watched. I don't know. I think that might beat the Tommy Galaxy just for its sheer speed. Uh-oh. Um. Yeah. Well. I, I mean, I Kaiba did. definitely has the the highest concept. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just because you know we're talking about um, like artificial bodies and switching consciousness between different forms and mm-hmm. guns that like melt you into goo and people dying without memory chips so that their memories turn into like eggs that float up into space and join like a river of of human consciousness and it's all very uh hard to grasp sort of and the mm. first episode doesn't really assist you in understanding yeah. the world because it gets bogged down in you remember that scene where uh they're trying out all the different like memory chips in that little yep, machine yep, yep. to see which is which that scene like that that comes immediately after the main character who has no idea who he is like there's a chase yeah. scene through the, the slums the underground yep. Yeah. And then we end up in this little tiny settlement where we have this scene is like five minutes or more. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I, I, I like, I like these scenes. I know that it just, uh, it just there to you know like feel it about the, uh, the world building. I, I like, I, I like it all the same. You know, like they have that scene. They have like, um, people just keep put on cheap to see, uh, who's who, uh, who's the uh, p- person behind the chips. And then we, we get into the scene where like all the members of the family are in one giant, um, you know, machine with all different faces. Right. So they, they living in the same bodies. Yes. And they just, I, 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 I really love the concept. Yeah, the concept is great, but I found, I, I just found it to be very disorienting. It is, it is, it, it, it. It's just there to like spoon feed us on this uh, information, like you know, like what 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 this world could do, what uh what it is. But yeah, I I and 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 I I know it's right, like the pacing right big time on on this. But yeah. all the same, I I I found I found all the ideas there are really interesting. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, and I do I do really like the Susian character art um mm-hmm. the the 3d backgrounds in fact there were 3d mm-hmm. backgrounds in kimono zume as well like when they fight the monster in the in the um i don't know i don't know what you're gonna what you're supposed to call it like the road that exists in a shopping center between uh one line of buildings and the other the street oh, i don't know the yeah, street yeah, like- <laughs> The LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Street I, is the word I was looking for. <laughs> there were uh, there was use of like uh, CG CG animation for the background uh, mm. when they were fighting the Shokujinki, and in Kaiba as well. That's taken to the next level. 
Um, yep. So you can kind of see the seeds of his his interest in the U.S.'s interest in 3D animation being planted in these early shows before mm-hmm. Science Saru. Uh, that whole chase scene at the start is like just perspective warping, uh, like wall wall. The walls are animated and everything is shifting in strange ways, and there's like mm-hmm. um, forced fisheye effects, um, yep. like that the animation has to adhere to. It's all very technical and uh, and interesting. Yeah, interesting I, to look I, at. I would say that though no, that uh, because uh, I w- we watch it already, so this is just a rewatch. The first episode is you know like uh, e- w- easier to swallow. I I would reckon that you know that like, all the new um, uh, new people who watch in the first episode will be get out of it very confusing. Confused. Maybe, but I remember watching the first episode of Kaiba for the first time many years ago and really, really liking it. This time, I didn't like it as much. Oh, interesting. I still find it very intri- intriguing and 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 really good. <laughs> I still like it. I like it a lot. So how, how come that you don't like it this time around? As much? I, I just felt like there wasn't a, there wasn't a good narrative flow to what I was watching. Um, mm-hmm. I, in fact, I think that That's this first point. episode of Kaiba would have functioned better as an art exhibit instead of a television show. Hmm. Like you, you create, you, you create an art exhibit with all these different like uh, concepts and machines and uh, and like bits of bits of scenery and stuff like that. You you know, you put it all in a room with different stuff in different parts of the room. People can walk around and, and look at things and, and assess them and, and be like, oh, yeah, I, I, really, I, really, like, I really like this art piece. <laughs> you put it into yeah. a TV show and you're kind of like, wait, weren't we just... Oh, oh, oh so now we're over... Oh, oh, now we're going through the clouds and yeah, it's over? I think I, think I understand what you mean because um, most importantly because Kaiba is just a... Uh, a, a clean state at the moment so they he have no idea about who he is we have no idea about that as well he have no idea about the world so it, it just it's just hard to follow and it just it just kind of hard to invest uh to him as a character yeah i mean it's telling that we've been talking about kaiba for over 10 minutes now and this is the first time that we've really spoken about, about the, the main characters. character yeah Right. I think that really says something about this series. Yeah, um, it says something about series that we uh, mentioned Kaiba and we we talk about Hyo Hyo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, Hyo Hyo has more personality than Kaiba um, by an that, order of that, magnitude. That's true. He, I think he just served up the witness of the uh, observer for for the first two episodes. Now you know, like he been pushed forward by other people. So uh, we, we kind of just follow in him at, at the moment. So he yeah. has no personality basically at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, we're not even following him in his body. We're following his memory chip right. wherever it might go. Because in and episode two, he has a completely different form. That's right. And uh, I, re- um, I remember like the first time I watched it, which is like a really long time ago, that I, I don't really understand the second episode until like at the very ending. So it, it it's really hard to follow because um because I I, I, I wouldn't know that uh, he was in you know like the other form until you know like they review at the very end. Right. I mean, I had I had a somewhat similar experience this time, even though I've seen it once before. And right. the the, right. the tip off is that um, the the woman who Popo yep. is is that mm-hmm. is it Popo is that the guy's name? In the red, yeah, in the red shirt, yeah. yeah. Po- so Popo, Popo leaves Kaiba with the, um, with woman. the smuggler, that woman. Yep. Uh, and she smuggles him onto. All right. Her name is Palm, P A R M Palm. Huh. Okay. I mean, she dies, doesn't she, in this episode? Yep, she so, died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, um, see, it, it explodes. Yeah, she explodes <laughs> from. Right. Uh, sexual stimulation or or something it's very i mean both kemonozume and kaiba are like have sex on the brain for sure mm-hmm. uh, and i mean tatami galaxy does as well 
once you get deep enough into it. Yeah. Uh, and Devil Man and Mind Game. Uh, <laughs> I mean, U- Yuasa is he's very much about like <laughs> the themes of like sexual themes, yeah. especially uh, adolescence. Yeah, um, but 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 then at other shows like the the sexual is not is not a pack of it at all. So Lou over the world. Uh, as you can. Right. Well, I mean, he, example. you know, he he got older and he probably wanted to tell stories that were more like family or family oriented or. Right. Just, I mean, Devilman Crybaby was only only three years ago. I don't think like Japan Singh had any like sexual scene either, which is the, very very interesting for for that kind of show. Yeah. All right, let's get back to Kaiba. <laughs> uh, I mean, what is what is there to say, really? I, the, I think the most important part of episode two. There's the whole there's the whole thing with Butter, which I don't really understand. I mean, I get that he is smuggling these memory chips, but yep. uh, I don't get why all these girls are, um, who who actually have tickets and are riding on this this spacecraft. I don't understand why they're all like in love with him or. Yeah, pretending he, to be in love with him, or I don't quite get it, really. Yeah, but 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 like like his his role is just like hopping over like from one girlfriend to another, and you know like like be trying to smuggling these um uh the these chips. I I think that's what his his role is. Well, yeah, he's a he's a memory chip trafficker. But yeah, if, if that's his business, if chips are his business, why does he care about like anyone's bodies why does he need girls and actual bodies and why are they in love with him i don't think the show ever really explained that yep 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 um so there's i mean that story is is kind of propelling the episode along but i think the most important takeaway from episode two is uh the introduction of vanilla Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because he kind of is like the team rocket grunt of of this series he's yeah, gonna he, he's gonna chase after kaiba yep and he's head has a voice hack in this episode hateable yeah hateable yeah i mean i he's i kind of i kind of like him just because of his design he has those little bear ears yep, yep, um, yep. and like that sloped <laughs> forehead he's just like he's he's you know how there are some dogs that are like so ugly that they're cute he's kind of like that <laughs> He's like a dog that's so ugly and off-putting that you can't help but love it. And you're talking about you and and all these dogs. I mean, I truly wasn't envisioning any particular dog breed when I said that. Um, all right, all right, just, yeah. Just the general idea of like an animal being so weird and disfigured that you're like, oh, I I want to yeah. hug it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's interesting that you so he's, I, I kinda, to a dog, but I I get your point. He kind doesn't he kind of have a face like a dog? Nah, he looks like a bear to me. I I oh yeah I yeah, guess, yeah you're right. I you're can right, see right. what you mean now. I can see what you mean. Yeah, he definitely does look like a bear. I I mean he has the bear ears for one thing. Yep. Um. Yeah, I mean, both of these episodes, I. They're all right. I mean, this is probably my least favorite of the four, least favorite of the four I, series. At least, at least I, up front in these two episodes. Yep, I I would say like um these two episodes have have very high concept, but like the emotional it it had to follow, and there's that there's like no emotional investment whatsoever, because yeah. we don't know the the Kaiba the characters, we don't know any of the characters. Yeah, they are just here to serve for the pursuit, but I. I I I I just like the concept behind it. If I uh, put in the reference term, I think I put that second. But mm. very close to all the others. They're all precious. Well, I mean, I hope Kaiba's good. I have a memory of it being pretty good, like it having some standout episodes. I think I remember that the ending of Kaiba is not very satisfying. I don't remember the ending at all. It's been a while. I just remember one of the characters uh, later on. Uh, uh, what's the name again? Uh, Chronicle or something? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, 
Noriko or something. Yeah, see, I just remember these characters. Yep. Me right. too. <laughs> right, should All right. we go to Tatami Galaxy? Yeah, let's go on to uh, Tatami Galaxies. All right. It, I feel at home while uh, watching ta Tatami Galaxy, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then, uh, please, you know, by all means, open us up here because whenever I watch this show, like my head spins. Yeah. Well, they they try to overwhelm us. Uh, like in the first few ten seconds, it's 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 like the whole amount of dialogue that I. I, f I feel that if we are like Japanese native, we still couldn't keep up with that. <laughs> and and because we are not, we have to read the subtitle and the, the subtitle, it just overwhelm overwhelming as well. But mm. um, yeah, I, I, like, I, I, I like the main concept behind it. Like this guy just is experience all these, um, uh, on all, all these, uh, you know, like um, college experience all over again with different you know like with different choices he take and this come out to like all the different um uh, endings and um it just it's just it's just so fun to watch like i i i already like the characters uh in the first episode i all i like i like all the characters basically um i feel like the second one when uh, they talk about the uh uh ozu the uh so, sorry, not Ozu, the uh, Jogasaki. Uh, jo Jogasaki, they, they might uh, uh, tip off some of these uh, uh, viewers because of his, uh, you know, like sexual behavior, so to speak. But um, apart from that, though, I think it's, it's entertaining from start to finish. I just, whenever I watch this, I feel like I'm doing homework. Oh, really? Why? Because you're always you know you're trying to make sense of it it's moving at such a rapid clip uh, there are so many allusions to things that will happen in the future or things that have happened in the past so you're trying to create like a timeline in your head and seeing how all all the different uh you know how all the different experiences all the different resets of the clock um mm -hmm. are nonetheless interconnected um like for example that's, in episode that's two the fun of it I, it feels right, like homework. On. It feels like ho homework to me. It feels like I'm watching Serial Experiments Lane. All right. <laughs> um, All right. In uh, at the start of episode two, or near the start, um, when Watashi has chosen to join the movie circle, um, no. he's talking about the you know the fact that Jogasaki wants to make these crowd pleasing films, and that's not re really what he's about. Instead, he wants mm -hmm. to make his own little independent films with just Ozu, like a two-man crew. And he, he yep. describes the contents of those three films. And they yep. are a prank war, uh, mm -hmm. a love square with a man torn between three women, and a yep. guy trapped in a maze of four and a half tatami rooms. So he, yep. <laughs> he essentially describes the entire rest of the series um, right there in, in that like 15-second span when he's detailing yep. those films. I love um, that. It just <laughs> it's just yeah. like the, the little detail that you know they they put on. So it is yeah. It's depend on how how we take them. You know. Well, it's I mean it's I, a huge it's a huge detail. It's massive. Yep. It's like mm. the you if you're making a, a web like a with push pins and string and newspaper clippings, like when yep. you're trying to catch a serial killer or something, you're pinning all that stuff up on a cork board. Um, <laughs> If like that's that's that would be like the biggest pushpin, in the most shocking red color that you would you would put up there, because it lays it lays down what's gonna happen the rest of the uh, rest of the series. So it's the, there's there's obvious stuff like that, but then there's much much smaller stuff, um, sure. like the the fortune tellers, uh, rates going up with every single episode. In the first episode, she charges a thousand yen. In the second, it's two thousand, yeah. and Wata she says, uh, "Did you raise your prices?" Yeah, you know. and and the and the and the fact that Ozu like uh, cross dressing like at the end of episode one as well. I think we learned that later on why we why he do why he does that. Right. Yes, that's a that's actually a similarity that I noted to Night is Short, Walk on Girl. Um, there's yep. cross dressing in that film as well in the gorilla theater uh, segments. Oh right. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, yep. And there's another similar, uh, another similarity to Night is Short, which is that um, at least in the very in the first timeline, uh, mm-hmm. Watashi meets Akashi uh, when she's working at a book fair, a used book fair mm-hmm. near mm-hmm. campus. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's right. that book fair uh, factors very significantly into the Night of Short Walk On Girl. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine how many even smaller similarities there are between the two. And that's they, why I love they it. They appear it, to be it, set it, in the it, same universe. It, yeah, if it feel like yeah, they are they are set on the same universe. It feel like that universe is you know like it's, um very rich. I uh, have like. Uh, many details they even mentioned about the um uh, the apartment it's not it's in that kind of apartment where where they live that you know like they, they are full of detail and yeah you know, the dormitory uh, i can't remember the name yeah, of yeah. it <laughs> that the uh the only criticism I, that i think that i i got for the first two episodes is um when uh, what does he choose the tennis circle we don't get to see that much it just it just mentioned in like in the two three lines and that's that's it you know like he he spent the rest of of his time just screwing around with couples right um so, yeah that's uh that's something that he and ozu do in episode one that's like the basis of their friendship and i doesn't that when you get to the end of tatami galaxy doesn't that recur somehow like that's in in another episode in another timeline he and Ozu because have done what? something similar. Uh, of um, of um, of, of what? Sorry, have like inter- interfered with a bunch of people's romantic lives. Doesn't that circle back around to them? Maybe, maybe that happens. Like in I... the very last episode, after he breaks out of the the Tatami Galaxy, um, the the reason that people want to like push Ozu off the bridge. Is because mm-hmm. he has interfered with their romantic lives, or yep, 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 yep doesn't yep. I? I think that it picks up and back in the same spot. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so the end of episode one, um, they are uh, they gonna uh, they gonna shed more light on it in one of these episodes uh, later on, where Ozu like having a romantic fling with like one of the girls. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, uh, that's what happened. So he trying to um, to prove his his love to to her. Hmm. Is it the one where they join the cult? Yeah, that's why that that's that's the um that's the daughter of that cult. Right. It's like a pyramid scheme, and they're trying to sell. I can't remember what they're trying to sell. Like bee, like honey bees, bees uh, wax yeah, or something. Bees. Yep. Hi. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, I right. have vague memories of of uh, <laughs> all all these different stories, you know, probably because they all they all connect to each other in in ways either big or small. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I mean, I I I think it's clever, um, but sometimes sometimes it it's too much it gets to be too much. Yeah. For example, at the yeah. very end of episode two, uh, Watashi is watching footage from his most recent film with Ozu, the one that he couldn't get to screen, yep. um, where Ozu is cross-dressing again. Mm-hmm. Um, and he and Ozu kiss uh, in, mm-hmm. in this film that he's watching. And then the camera zooms in on the film, goes through it, and then suddenly we're in this other dimension where the movie is what's real, and we see a screen appear out of thin air So Mm -hmm. Watashi is watching the movie, which is now reality, from a screen Mm -hmm. within his own reality. It just makes no fucking sense at all, Uh, and it's (laughs) it's just done to be at like as as meta as possible. And I don't I don't really get down with that. That's uh that's just too much. As Joe Kasaki says in episode two, that is just stylistic masturbation. I <laughs> all right. It it is a matter um of how you take a bit because I I I I know what you, what scene you're talking about and I really enjoy it. Just innovative. I mean, sure, but can you can you explain it? 
No, I don't. I, I, I don't think it's, it's it need to be explained as well. It just you know it it it's all about experience. It's all about fun. It's all about uh perspective as well. I think and and that scene is like you know like ch- changing the uh, perspective to you know. Um, yeah, but like for what for what purpose? Um, it it kind of speak into the the big team as well. I don't. So, I don't know. I'm. I'm not sure that it does because it's not as though when uh, Watashi is when we when we move through the screen and we're, suddenly we're seeing things from Watashi and Ozu, the subjects of the film. We haven't mm-hmm. actually entered. Like at that point, the clock has not moved backwards yet. We we're not jumping into a yep. different, um, like dimension or possible future. Uh, yeah. So it was just done as a like a neat little bit of uh, filmmaking or storyboarding mm-hmm. uh, so <laughs> I mean that scene where where Jogasaki is like the Hollywood system is best after all you got to make a movie that the people will love otherwise you're you might as well just be jerking off um, Yuasa yeah. is clearly with that line of dialogue like I would not be surprised if that wasn't in the original novel and Yuasa was just taking a shot at his critics um, who claim that that's what his work is. <laughs> right. I actually have the original novel, and um, it is said to be, you know, like uh, USA had been expanded a lot from from the original uh, novels. Yeah, so I bet. So I, I would love to, to read the, the novel to see, like, um, how, much, how, how much different it is from, from the series. I'm sure he changed a ton. <laughs> but... Yeah. You know what he didn't change a ton from? He's... I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say it. Ping Pong the Animation. Oh, right, right, right. Ping Pong the Animation. All right, let's do that. I mean, he... The split-screen style, like, hues closely to the manga panels, apparently. I haven't read the manga. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he, so he, he followed the story of the manga pretty, pretty closely. Mm-hmm. That's that's good because um it's been a while that I have I haven't watched up ping pong as well so I don't remember all the details, and you know like read uh just watching on these first two episodes again just make me, you know like fall fall in love all over with all these characters they have a really great dialogue, yeah especially what what lead what lead into like you know like, like the title of the first uh episodes it just. I, I I feel like it's just done perfectly. Yeah, that it's scene a... is really cool. Yeah, though I mean the way that the camera moves um, yep. out of the gym, like through the wall, up to the sky, and back down yep. to Wenga and his his translator, um, yep. in in all one like one continuous take, is kind of fascinating. And then, yeah, and then the way the way that they uh, comment about about the shot about like the quality of the two players with how even, you know, looking at them, it's just, it just cool. It's yeah, and I can easily imagine that sort of scene feeling, like, really dumb. Um, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that is exactly right, but they make it perfectly. Yeah, well, I think the reason it works is because, like, from the very first frame that you see him, Wenga, it, Wenge is, is yeah. like, an incredible <laughs> character. He's he may yep. be my favorite character in any Yuasa work. Mm. Um, like he's so he's so burdened, uh, you know, by his past, and he has such like a clear chip on his shoulder. He's a he's a big attitude. Um, he and yet, angry. He, yeah, he's he's angry. Yeah, he's angry. He feels as though like he's he's been sent to hell. He's been sent to the ends of the earth. Um, mm. And, you know, the way his character grows throughout the course of the series is, is incredible because he starts from such a low point, at least in his own mind. And, mm-hmm. you know, even though he doesn't reach the top of the ping pong world, he becomes the happiest that he's ever been in his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I just, I just think that I think this show, like the characters and, and the themes of this show are so accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And yet they're so, they ring so true. Like 
it, this is this is just the most human show that Yuasa has ever made, I think. Yep, and um, and the most distinctive as well is uh, when you said accessible. I also think that like all the characters are distinctive and you know like are pretty unique. That uh, we we might we might overlook uh, many of these, you know, like more, um, more lousy. I, I I would say if if it were done in you know like by other director or by uh, other stories, like the one we just we just said before, like uh, these the these people just hearing, uh, the the sound of the um uh, of the shot to uh, uh, to tell about the quality of the characters. And the fact that like on the, on the players for now, uh, they they looking up to to smile, like they 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 see the potential of smile. Like all the good players, they 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 did that. And to think about that, I think it's a bit much. <laughs> like in the two characters, like how many people have a comment on on smile qualities? Um, Joe, the coach, Butterfly Joe, Koizumi. Yep. They're still calling him at this point. Um, Wenge. Yep. Hears, hears somehow that he's losing on purpose, <laughs> which is absurd. <laughs> and yet the uh, the the dialogue that he has with his with his translator is so like the way that they work out that that's what's happening slowly, like it's a process. Yep. Um, is it's pretty it's pretty well written, I think. Like you get to discover along with um, the characters that that that's what's going on because they're piecing it together yep. like detectives. Um, yep, yep, yep. So there's those two, and then members of the club as well have have pointed yeah. out that like smiles really strong. But there's they they think that Pecco is even stronger. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you um you miss out the other one. The um, I think I think Dragon. Oh yes, that's right. In episode two, Dragon comes to uh, to recruit Smile yep. because he he saw him play in a middle school tournament yep. i think so probably when he was like 14 or something and he yep. immediately singled him out as like a threat yep. Um, yep even though he lost to kazuma i think yep. is the guy's name sakuma yep sakuma yes thank you kazuma's from kimonozume yes. yeah so a, a lot of people have already identified that that smile is like a monster which he is that's which what's so cool is. about episode two you get to see the robot emerge Yep, yep, and um, I, 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 I love that. Um, I, I think it feels personal to me now. The fact that you know that like, I just pick up uh play, play ping pong again now, and um, so so it it have it had a bit effect on me that um, you know it 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 feel like oh, uh, yeah, watching something that uh you you know you, uh you know about. And uh, I would say like the animation done in this one is pretty good as well. It doesn't look um, uh, look bad at all. And the the way that they nail the characters, uh, all the players are pretty good because Mao, as good as he is, he's not a fighter, so he doesn't want to win. Uh, he he do he doesn't have like the th the trust to to win, and that already make him not an ideal uh player to you know to. To play for, you know, like to to uh to win. Yeah, and he doesn't and have any... interesting to dig into that. Right, so I mean that that's what that's what Kong says. Physical ability. Yeah, yeah. Right. As he's leaving, he says it's a shame that no one ever taught him, um, you know, to want to win. No one ever yep. instilled that in him, and of of course that's exactly what Koizumi wants to do. Mm -hmm. that's what he tries to do throughout all of episode two in hilarious fashion i remember watching it for the first time and seeing the two of them <laughs> seeing the two of them talking yep. um all you see is smile and koizumi smile sitting yep. at a desk and koizumi is sitting in a chair and then th as the scene progresses you realize first of all that they're in a classroom with other people and then yep. uh, you know a couple cuts later you realize it's koizumi's class and he's the english teacher and he's interrupting yep. the test that he's giving to his students <laughs> just to talk yep. to Smile and try to convince I, him to do this. Like it, it's so funny. The show, the show doesn't take a break. There's no like laugh here moment. Yeah, uh, yep. you just yep. laugh because it's funny. 
and uh, and the third point is that uh, when when he said that, he just like what what English uh, uh can do for you, you know. And, That's right. <laughs> and he's and he's the one who's who who speak a lot of English there. Right. Yeah, he's he's the English teacher, and he's like, ah, English is worthless. <laughs> Dedicate your life to ping pong, and to me. Become my dog. Oh, right. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, I especially love the accordion song. Um, mm-hmm. The I love ping pong soundtrack in general. Uh, yep. The accordion song that plays as as Koizumi is like courting him, um, and he he says he's in this he's in the teachers' lounge, and he says to a fellow staff member, um, you know, like spring spring has sprung for this old man. Mm-hmm. Spring has finally come for this old fool. Uh, yep. And he's yeah, he well, as that. he says that he's writing a letter. Then of course the next scene is uh, Smile discovering the letter in his in his locker, and and uh, Pecco. Yeah. <laughs> Pecco's like, ooh, what's this? And it's a training regimen. <laughs> In English. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's just so, so amazing, these characters. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. I mean, and it's interesting that ping pong is so funny because it's so, it's also so, like, uh, obsessed with yeah, the it, idea of competition and of... Uh, like human potential and right um like setbacks and frustration and at the same time it's humorous you know it's it has it all yeah but 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 it's like it it, it's like the comedy it's just very understated you know like you you didn't you pick up on that it just it 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 doesn't have many like laugh out loud moment but when you do pick up on on the observe observe the uh observe detail of this it just it just feels so funny it, it makes us you know laugh right and um um i i found the um uh, the chemistry between uh, pickle and smile is also pretty uh interesting yeah you know what scene i love between the two of them is the scene on the train um, right. in episode I... in episode one when they're on the way their way to wenga's school and then on mm-hmm. the way back the mm-hmm. particular exchange they have where where Pecco says, "So is it the next stop?" and then Smile says, "No, it's the one after." And it's repeated yep. twice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I've I've always like I've watched the show a bunch of times, and I always think wonder like why that has such an impact on me. Um, mm-hmm. And I have because I have they, what's up? I think because they possess uh, such a natural. Um, Uh, can be sweet to each other like they they feel at home to each other and that um and the, i think i think that that very dialogue uh, speak to the um the personality of the two as well like a smile is the one who more observant and right. but he doesn't care he 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 feel like he's he's a robot you know so he he doesn't say that he care but he he does not And 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 it I think it it also speak to more of the kind of smile, uh, look looking after pickle, right? Even if he if if he said like he he doesn't he doesn't really care about about that, right? Yeah, I mean like he he resists when his senpai in the in the ping pong club want him to go and look for Peko. Yeah, um, he says you know I'll draw you a map. Go do it yourself. Um, But he did it anyway. Yeah. Because he really, he uh, Pecco is his hero, as you find out over the course yep. of the series. Like there's some Spoilers. ambiguity about yeah, there's some ambiguity <laughs> about who the hero is. Yep. I just dude, every time they do, um, Hiro Kenzan, Hiro Kenzan, yep. Hiro Kenzan, I get chills. <laughs> I just yep. Yep. love it so much. Um, that is my fav- favorite uh, moment in the second episode between us, uh, uh, Smile and Pecco. Because as a smile, um, you know, like chanting that, uh, that was, uh, and and he's struggling to playing against um against his coach, uh, Pickle just just I I I remember his smirk and he said like uh you are still the same uh smile, uh you are I I think he's he think uh something along the line that you are so uh, predictable. Hmm. I actually don't remember that. I remember that scene, and then and then uh, smile just um, uh, you know like uh, come back, 
and play stronger and then that that surprises Peko like how 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 he how he's so good now right yeah well i mean Peko doesn't realize smile's true strength yep. i don't think yep. because smile mm-hmm. always holds back when he plays him and there's there's also some ambiguity in whether he's doing it on purpose or whether he doesn't realize it his coach thinks right. that he doesn't realize it, he that he doesn't realize mm-hmm. that he does it because he denies it immediately um yep. but you know, if you ask yeah, it, if you ask Wenge, he would say that he's doing it consciously. Yeah, I I I do think that it's more like maybe inferior complex, because he um he he saw Pico as a hero and 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 somehow he just and not uh, not only Pico but also also Sakuma as well when he played against uh these childhood friends mm-hmm. who start from the very beginning he. He just, uh, yeah, he, he just doesn't play his full strength. I don't. I really don't think that it's an inferiority complex. I think that Smile doesn't want to give himself over to his competitive nature, like his his robot personality, um, mm. that just like eliminates everything in its path, and doesn't care about the emotions of other people. Um, because in mm. his childhood, he was taunted. We we see in his little flashback in the locker. Um, yep. There's that shot where on the bottom half of the the frame, there's like a scrolling image of uh, children taunting him, which eventually turn into like dinosaur looking things and weird monsters who are calling him a robot and a Roomba and stuff like that. Um, He doesn't he doesn't want to be thought of as like unkind or unfeeling or inhuman. So he suppresses the part of himself that is able to turn off his feelings and just compete ruthlessly. Um Mm -hmm he has to he has to hide that part of himself away. I think that's why he doesn't try his best against Peko because Peko is his hero and his his only friend. Mm-hmm. Um and he doesn't want to do anything to endanger that relationship. No. But uh, eventually so the, once you get to the end of the series, he he learns and it it yeah. comes at great cost, but he learns that the best way to respect his friend and to love his friend is to compete like at the, the highest level. Yeah. That's right. And Peko, oh Peko's God. the hero because he teaches that to everyone that he plays after mm-hmm. his transformation. And um, <laughs> I just love Peko the way he, the way he cries after he loses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you you made a you made a good point when I was talking about the their exchange on the train. Is it this stop? No, it's the yeah, one yeah, after. Yeah. That smile is like his mm-hmm. caretaker, and in that scene yeah. as well smile uh, right. like literally picks him up off the floor <laughs> yeah he's crying because he just got skunked uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that man. yeah but that's i, I mean at that point it's interesting because at that point in their relationship smile is still babying him and peko is still um like a child and mm-hmm. both both of those traits and those characters are flipped on their head by the time you get to the end um yeah. smile is no no longer taking it easy on on anyone not even himself mm-hmm. and uh and peko is you know refuses to lose he he can't he can't lose he's he's the hero mm-hmm. and it's just 11 episodes so you guys you know if you haven't watched it's just you know come and watch it absolutely like all of these um Many of uh, uh, US uh, series are just one core, so it's just a quick uh, watch. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend all four of these shows. Mm-hmm. Um, Ping Pong might be the most accessible, despite how ugly it looks on the surface. Um, it doesn't look ugly at all. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, no, I'm, it's not. <laughs> I'm like one of the biggest ping pong fans in the world, probably. <laughs> And uh, and I think the show is ugly, like straight up. I mean, I think it's beautiful, but I also yep. think that it's ugly. <laughs> All right, because looking at uh um on that sense, like all of his stuff are are pretty ugly. Um, uh, Kai, Kaiba isn't actually. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Kaiba is. I don't think that the Tatami Galaxy is is ugly looking. Well. It's, it depends. Yeah, it, but it but I, I I I don't regret really being from the animation ugly at all. They look great. Yeah, I mean I really I really like the way it looks. Um, but 
like if you there's there's a lot of anime fans who just expect all anime to look you know basically the same um and if you tell if you tell that subset of of fans no this show is not ugly what what are they going to think they're going to think that you're blind that you're crazy or that you're pretentious yeah well they they actually uh think of any any man look like um hack you or something along that line well yeah just that like you know anime when people think of anime they think of a general um eye shape and uh like spiky hair Mm -hmm. you know and only one character in ping pong has spiky hair it's the it's the senpai with like the antlers his hair looks like weird deer antlers. <laughs> oh my god! Look. And even, even that guy is like an awesome character. I love him. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think the show's kind of kind of ugly looking. Uh, mm. Lines that are that would in real life lines that would ordinarily be straight are like weird and crooked. And yep. Sometimes the animation um, in the ping pong matches doesn't doesn't make a lot of like th- there's not a lot of physical consistency to it. Sometimes it looks kind of janky. <laughs> but and one thing we do miss after the first two episodes, you know what that is? What's that? The the, the OP. Oh my god, I love the ping pong OP so much. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I I you know the the Kemono Zume uh, opening I don't actually like that much. The song's kind of cool, but mm-hmm. um, I don't remember much about uh, Kemono Zume OP. But Kaiba, Titan Galaxy, and Ping Pong the Animation OPs are, are top. Yeah, they're all they're all great. In fact, when I when I was rewatching Kaiba, um, mm-hmm. and and the OP kicked in, and I saw, I mean, the song the song is just so like radiant when the mm-hmm. when the chorus kicks in. And like there's mm-hmm. the the female harmonized vocals like layered on top of each other, um, yeah. it's so it's so wonderful. But the what what actually got me as I was watching it was the scene where the two hands come together, and it's constantly mm-hmm. flashing through all the different arms of the different characters who you'll meet over the course of the series. Yep. Just yep, like yep. the co- the combination of the music and that uh, that visualization of like closeness and togetherness. Um, I, w- I was like feeling tears prick at the back of my eyes as I was as I was watching that on screen. Uh, nice. It was really it was really inspiring. Uh, and then I yeah. then I watched the two episodes and they were like <laughs> confusing and muddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, I, that, Kaiba has an amazing op. Yeah, the, the the first thing that I did after finishing the first two episodes of Ping Pong is I I click on the the real OP of Ping Pong to just you know like immerse in it, and it just it's just freaking good. What do you mean the What do you mean the real OP? Oh, were you watching uh, files with the where the OP wasn't finished? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Oh, I did. okay. So you're watching the TV rips. I watching the TV drift. That's gotcha. right, and okay. I think it's it's it take on uh, it take to um, episode four or five that they got like the real the real OP. Right, I remember that. Yeah, I mean the 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 OP was directed by Shinya Ohira, um, who's one of the one of the most legendary animators like of all time. He's do you remember uh, Wan Wan the doggy? the short from genius party where you go into like the child's uh imagination and everything is totally abstract and looks like right right the cut one out. that we have different opinion about yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i remember shinya that. ohira directed that as well right right so his right. his he's like an extremely um experimental and avant-garde animator mm-hmm and you can definitely mm-hmm. see some of his touch in the ping pong OP. <laughs> there are yep. some shots yep. that are like, you know, you show that to somebody who's never seen anime before and they're going to be like, what the, what is this? <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> well, I guess that would be from between us and, you know, like normal anime fan. We all, all I see is just, it's amazing from start to finish. Yeah, it's great. And the song is great. Yep. All right, so we done with 
uh, USR stuff. Let's move on to uh, finish the two volume of Spirit Circles. Are you ready, Booper? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't enjoy this at all. Right. It's sad. I just have very But, little, um, very little to say about it. It just, fe it just feels like it kind of went full shonen at the end. Yeah. Well. Um. So we get into uh, two different timelines, and I still don't know why. Like one of them, uh, where they have like on the gender uh, uh reverse. Yeah. Um. Why? Why is why they skim it? Like why? Why? Why is so brief? Uh, I don't know. It probably. I'm. I'm pretty sure they have an like, explanation for that. But uh, because like all their life, they just remember that um, alien encounter, and right. nothing else. Well, I mean, there's there's a little text box that says, and over the course of the next 50 years, uh, <laughs> yep. Foucault became like a geologist and always wondered about, you know, her, her destiny and. <laughs> the the point of it was just so that they could encounter those aliens and get the magic bug catching net they could use yep. to defeat the antagonist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so like I don't know. I I just find that to be completely unsatisfying. All right. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> we we got into the the storyline of Fortuna. And, and we look, I, I I found a couple of things that interesting there. First is the um the Fortuna timeline, which is supposed to be like the original timeline. Uh, it actually set in the far future, so yep. it actually the future, not the past. But um, but here he um, he kind of like um. Transverse the whole thing, and put it back to the whole thing, and then he just um. Uh, hijack the body of uh, our main characters. Whoa, you kind of glossed over a whole bunch of stuff there. <laughs> yep, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I knew you want to talk about that whole 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 bunch of stuff. <laughs> I mean, what is what is there to say about it? Um, I I don't know. Like I I felt even you know even if we were to mention all the all the details that the anime packs into those uh, six ish chapters. Yeah. Um, Even even reading through them, it, it kind of felt like I was reading the cliff notes of a much larger story. Like, for example, um, mm -hmm. Fortuna going from Spirit Forge to Spirit Forge and draining like entire cities of their their yep. energy sources and setting off yep, a yep. chain reaction, which ended up like melting down one of the, the factories and causing the deaths of like tens of thousands of people. Yep, yep, um, yep. It's It just it just happened so fast, you know. He he was at one forge, and then instantly, you know, next page, he's he's at the next one, and it's it's like we're just getting an overview of his life rather than an intimate snapshot of a particularly important part. Um, and as a result, yeah, I felt I, kind I of distance I, from the material. Yeah, I think I understand what you mean. Um, it. I, I think that's the same problem that I think you encounter with um Planet With. Hmm. Where I only like made it four whole, episodes whole into Planet With. Yeah, the, where the whole thing just you know like keep building up uh into uh, com a complete mesh. I think. <laughs> I I I don't have the problem with that actually. I don't I I enjoy Planet With, but um. Um, in that particular one, like I don't really care about like all the explanation stuff that that the 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 show keeps, you know, like trying to explain us. Yeah, there there was a there was definitely a lot of pseudoscience, um, mm -hmm. in these in these chapters, and I just, you know, whenever Fortuna would would talk about something, I mean, especially because in his youth he was like trained as a spirit practitioner or spirit researcher or whatever and he fa he found that he was he was a prodigy so he found that eventually the only person he could talk to about this stuff was his was his teacher because everyone else was below his level and yeah. there were just like scenes of him talking about ah yes you have to go to the the 12th the 12th column and the 15th row of the 
of the river of of life in order to see beyond the the veil of the fifth dimension and i you know i just don't care i yeah that doesn't inform his character at all it doesn't tell me anything about who he is as an individual just that he's real smart yeah one thing that i i don't i don't really get it though so um rune and is that we soon find out are the spirit that make my um uh that make my fortuna so that's why they don't uh, reincarnate into like uh other six um uh alternative worlds right yeah, I mean, Rune is an artificial spirit. He created her entirely on his own, and East uh, is yeah. Yeah. the the spirit of a man who had died that he like resurrected. He pulled it out of the circle of life, all right, uh, and, so... and gave it a, a form that wouldn't ever decompose or die. Right, but but because that happened in the future, would they be uh, they they have their soul before that? Like in in case of East, because I I understand why Rune, you know, like doesn't appear in other timelines, but East like before he become East, actually like his soul were was some something else before, right? It must have been yeah, because he was a human being, um, but I don't think we saw another version of East in any of the other timelines. Yeah, that that's that that's that's what my question is. Why is it because that our Fortuna just you know like doing. Uh, reincarnate him? No, no, it's not. Um, take it, take in the spirit of him. So that's why um, you know, like his previous uh spirit doesn't form into a person. No, I I Who think knows? it just <laughs> it just off my mind. <laughs> <laughs> who Who knows? Yeah. Um. I don't know. Yeah, so so yeah, I I understand with you. I I I think like the um, uh, the whole thing makes sense, in, in the sense that uh we um uh, we see like on the neat conclusion that they 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 do explain everything that you know like the over question popping up and um it have a clear you know like protagonist and antagonist as well. I I I myself don't find really that invested to uh, to to what the ending was well i mean the ending is too neat it's, yeah yeah it's is, it's too it's too problems? neat yeah yeah definitely right. why we're too we're neat. dealing with parallel dimensions and mm-hmm. weird spirit circles that this guy has invented that can apparently grow in size to envelop the entire planet until the spirit of the planet emerges and and stops it on like a galactic scale mm-hmm. and uh there there's like a bug catcher net how first of how did the bug catcher net even materialize because because all of, of the uh... all of fortuna's past lives within his consciousness like created yep. a hole or something in his consciousness so that they could they could pass the the no, bug catching from the... yeah please explain it to me <laughs> no no uh, i i just think because it's from the aliens the alien make that they want to give it to the uh uh to the character so it it, it outside of uh of fortuna you know range and I don't know if Fortuna aware of uh, of that. I, I don't think he 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 know of the uh, uh, close encounter with third guy here. Right. Well, he he's not. Yeah. It's like it's like Fu, uh, Futa's trump card against yeah. him. But what I what I'm what I don't understand is how was how were they able to capture him in the bug catching net when they didn't have physical forms? They were part of his consciousness. Yeah, uh, they open the eyes and then they, for somehow he just catch it into him. <laughs> I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They didn't Spirit. have physical bodies with which to swing the net downward. The net itself could not have yep. been present in the physical world because yep. it didn't. It didn't exist at that point. Like it, it belonged to one of the people that was just a part of his brain that was just neurons firing. Mm-hmm. 
right. makes no sense at all. It's like a big deus ex machina. And the whole fight with Coco where they're just like slamming their spirit circles into each other and yep. going like, rah, grah. A lot of sound effect. God. It's just so, it's just so, it was so lame. I thought it was really lame. That That's how right. I would, that's how I would characterize it. <laughs> and of course his motivation, Fortuna's motivation is that he's going to become the universe. He's going yep. to become the universe. How does that make any sense at all? I don't really get that either. I... <laughs> this, you know what this reminds me of is like Full Metal Alchemist, um, right. where where uh, Father, who is the the antagonist of Full Metal Alchemist, wants to become God. But in Full Metal Alchemist, the the process by which he would become God is is like meticulously built up over the course of many many chapters yeah. until you understand exactly what he's what he's trying to do and what purposes he's using to achieve that goal mm -hmm. in in spirit circle something similar is happening he wants to become the universe instead of god but how is he going to do that oh you know you just go into the you know you just make your spirit so circle really big so it goes around the whole world and then uh uh, you know, you go into the river of, of time and you become the universe. There is, all right. Uh, I think the, um, yeah, like, like I said, the ending makes sense, but it just, you know, like all over ahead for me. But there are some, um, some detail that I really like. Like, for example, like in one of the, uh, of the world where, um, uh, when they, um, uh, flip the, um, uh, the the gender, mm -hmm. uh, they 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 said about the Fuji uh, mountain where where there's the cloud all over it, and right. I I I would think that that it is like the spirit circle, that 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 is there. But I I found that, that wasn't it a UFO. This might be the UFO as well. I mean, there were yeah, there were aliens we, in that chapter. Hmm. I, I I found that bit was actually very interesting. You know, like you can make like a whole kind of of series based on that. I'm I'm thinking of fully cool at the moment, but you know, quite. I mean, you could make a full series about it. You could even make several chapters about it, or mm -hmm. you could do what Spirit Circle did and make one chapter about it, and then cut back to the present day because they just want to get it over with so they can get to uh, the conclusion faster. All right, which is exactly what they did. <laughs> That's what they did. Yeah, and um, and it just me, but I found that the uh, uh, the file that we downloaded to be um, uh, in um, not support us when it comes to you know like the big uh, the big panel where they um, where they kind of form the two the two right. pages together. Yeah, you have to have an image reader uh, that can combine images. Like Honeyview, yep. or yep. I don't know one of the other ones. So it's kind of a bit disorienting, but you know, like I at that point, I don't really care about the story. You can just use your imagination. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm gonna. It, it's I'm gonna sad go... though because. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's sad though because I think with a right mindset, I think I be might be able to enjoy this, but. Uh, that's just a lot of explanation, a lot of talking, and not enough about the two main characters, or other characters that I, I found the the ending to be, you know, not, not as effective. Yeah, all of his friends basically were irrelevant mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah, it's about the four of them. Mm hmm. Yeah, you were about saying something. Yeah, I was gonna. Go, I have. I have a, a big complaint, like the biggest one that I have about these these volumes. All right, go on. <laughs> so, um, the the for the whole for the whole manga, we know that uh, Futa's mom is pregnant. Right. Um, yep. You know that's it's a it's a big deal because he's he's going to get a brother or sister. Um, mm. We learn in. Chapter 41, from Fortuna, who has taken over uh, Futsa's consciousness, uh, yep. that the baby is going to be stillborn. 
He's seen the future mm. and he knows that the baby is going to be stillborn. Mm. So we just get this knowledge um, from Fortuna and then we move on immediately. Mm-hmm. And he's he's off to the final battle. So that mm-hmm. even just by itself is, is pretty like underwhelming, you know, Yep. for him to learn about about this potential future this way while he's trapped mm-hmm. inside of Fortuna's uh, brain or his own brain and then it's immediately off to the final battle that's like that's like upsetting yep um but the real problem is that in the middle of the fight when he gets the phone call Mm -hmm. uh and he realizes that the twins were born Mm -hmm. this is this is massive like the the fact that the future that he has seen did not come to pass that the the baby was not stillborn in fact twins were born it's a sign mm-hmm. that time is not linear. <coughs> Fortuna was wrong, which means all of his theories about space-time are subject to doubt. Yep. His in, his entire empire that he has built for himself and his his desire to become one with the universe or God or whatever, uh, all all of yeah, all of that is like completely uh, flawed, and he's not the perfect being he imagines himself to be because this future that he thought was uh fixed in space time was not uh was not the way that he saw it mm-hmm. but that that that's that should have been in my opinion that should have been the climactic moment of the manga like the the absolute biggest bombshell of the entire thing that mm-hmm. you know you build fortuna up to be this godlike being who understands everything about causality and the workings of the universe. Um, and then you realize at a critical moment, he's, he's flawed. That sh- that should mm-hmm. have been the, the, the big like kick in the gut moment. But instead mm-hmm. it sucks because we learned about the child being stillborn um, in like two sentences. And then it was kind of put to bed. So mm-hmm. there's no opportunity for there to be like a big reversal if we had learned that the child was going to be stillborn in one of Futa's past lives where he had a dream about it and he, he carried that information with him over the course of several chapters or even a whole volume and it impacted him in like a really profound way and then you find out that the twins were born, all of a sudden that's earth shattering. That's mm. like seismic in nature. It's huge. But... um yeah. I, Instead, yep. Like, it it dis, it actually disgusted me, the way that it was handled. Um, That's a strong word. Yeah, I would say that like it's a sign of incompetent authorship. Mm-hmm. I think I get what you mean, and I think it make more sense. It would be much more impact if it had it done that way, the other way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was like upsetting to me, but uh, in the end, they, you know, they got him in the bug catching net and <laughs> they saved yep. the world. <laughs> so all's well that ends well. All right. Whew. So what? we need. Uh, all right. So we we need to decide. Uh, what is the next uh classic show that we want to? Oh, is that cover? you're not gonna say anything else about Spirit Circle? <laughs> is that was that it? <laughs> I was gonna ask one more question, just for, for right. you. like, what did you think about the final chapter with the reveal that there were like higher beings, who were kind of like pulling the Overseas. strings? Uh, I just don't don't take it serious, seriously at all. You know, uh, we we. We find out that, you know, like because uh, Fortuna done something so intense that uh, it advise um, aliens, it advise like all, um, all the higher um, uh, beings to, to, to be involved or to, you know, like just, uh, just to, to look over the whole things. And I think... I, just, I, 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 think, I think it makes sense in, in, in that sense that, you know, like because of that but uh i i i just don't have like any uh, um e- emotional involvement whatsoever on that i just mm-hmm. yeah you know 
Yeah. Oh, I guess I guess there were higher beings the whole time doing stuff. Yeah. So it all yep. ha- it all happened for a reason. You know, the fact that uh uh they they let uh thousands of people die is for the uh uh for the greater good. Right. Yeah, that's a really that's a really difficult thing to uh that's a really difficult curveball to sell to your audience in the final chapter of your series. Yeah. Um, nah, I just don't take it seriously at all. Have you ever like read a book or seen a film or anything where a like lot. at the at the end it kind of zooms out, metaphorically speaking, and you realize yep. that oh that people were pulling the strings all along, like cosmic forces were were pulling the yeah, strings yeah. all along. Yeah, that um yeah, that there, there's a lot of movie about that. Um, there's a lot, but it depends. It depend on you know the how appropriate, appropriate you feel. But I I also experienced a, a moment where you know that at the end there's some twist that you know that just pulling the uh, the carpet out of our out of our feet and it just I uh, we feel betrayed. So yeah, I I experienced that a lot. Hmm. I mean, I've only ever read one story where I where this kind of ending was employed and it, it actually worked for me um, um, so I was I was that, wondering like have you seen have you ever is seen that anime it or is that... no it's actually a book it's called right. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell I have not I had never heard of that hmm. it's actually my favorite book um, hmm. and the, the right. idea is that there are like two magicians one who fights for France and one who fights for England um, and yep. you, at the end, you realize that they've been unwittingly doing the bidding of um, like natural forces. Hmm. So like the the part of the natural world that that England makes up, and the part of the natural world that France makes up, they've been doing the bidding of like not even spirits or gods or anything, but like the the essence of of those lands. And it's really, it's really interesting. But in general, I feel like that concept um, is just incredibly uh, <laughs> challenging. It, yeah, it, I, I, I don't think it's a good concept to do with it because we, we invest to you know the, the characters and and what their problem is. So it had to be built up properly in order for that to work, or it had to speak into you know like uh, the very theme of it. You know, like everything is controlled by you know like by the higher being for that to work right like preserve so they have to yeah so they have to do a lot of you up to that to 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 uh in order for that to make sense yeah all right <laughs> well um so so what uh what what are we gonna do for the next two weeks uh whooper so what is the next postcard topic um, the spring 2021 mid-season, mid-season report. Nice. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it'll be a little bit past the mid-season mark, um, but that's okay. Yep. We uh, we are about to do a four or five of them, so it is it's the it's the pain on uh, what we uh, we are currently at the moment. Yeah, I was I was thinking that like for since we're done with Spirit Circle now, we need a new a new classic. New mm-hmm. classic uh, anime series to be sure. keeping up, keeping up with. I was thinking that we could do Kemono Zume. Hmm, that's actually interesting. But uh, you watched it before, right? Yeah, I have. I haven't but watched it, so I, I, I'm interested to 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 uh, doing that for sure. Okay, well, we you know we can we can do that one. Uh, I mean, the reason the reason that I uh, brought it up is because we could do it quickly. Mm. <laughs> um, we've already seen two there's 11 more so if we do like yep. two 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 and three or three 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 and two or you know whatever well yeah and of course there's other options for us to explore as well we'll we'll come up with something yep um i'm, I'm good with with this option so uh yeah we we, we can discuss more about this sure all right, all right we're done so, yep. So tune up for next postcard for our mid-season uh, review. So we're gonna do um for now. We are planning to do Nomad, uh, Megalobox two, 
um, Dynazinant uh, to your eternity. What is the last one? Odd Taxi. Uh, Odd, Odd Taxi is my favorite. <laughs> I actually have not seen past the first episode, but right, I'm right, still, I don't know anything else about it, but I'm still convinced that my original reading of the show was correct. All right. Uh, give, give it a, uh, a watch. Yeah. Um, all I can say is I love the dialogue of this. Yeah. I, I imagine that it stays good the, the whole way through. At least I'm, I'm hoping. 2021 right. needs some wins in the anime department. <laughs> All right. So that's the end of our this, this week's podcast. Uh, see you in two weeks. Thanks for listening.